just we just finished an exhibition out here at the uh, softball magazine spring training and uh just like with the long haul bombers uh i hit one week in uh, one of the events last year i hit 12 out of 15 and uh uh, out of those 12, I mean, you probably really only hit, if, you, if you're lucky enough, you hit half of them right on the button. And, and that's, that's being, you know, that's, that's uh, actually, you know, being a little exaggerated. You might, you're only hitting about 30% of the balls on the sweet spot, perfect in those events. But what, what saves us is, uh, you know, a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger. So that, that helps carry the ball a little further and, and good technique. I mean, you can miss a ball, but if you've got good hip drive and, and your, your hands get through the ball, you don't have to hit it right on the sweet spot and you still carry enough to get you a home run. So uh, like, for instance, the last ball I hit to win it last year, when they told me you got to have this ball to win, I didn't hit that ball right on the button. Uh, you know, I missed it, but it had, the wind was blowing, which helped it, but it had a good, a good enough backspin. I got enough of the ball to where it carried out and I won the event. So, so every swing is not going to be perfect and hit right on the button. But if, if you work on your technique and, and some of the things in your swing, you'll get away with some of those missed hits. And 90% uh, and of the time, it'll be a hit instead of an out. We've, we've had some guys here today that, that uh, one of the biggest things is they overextend early in their swing. And I corrected that. And then they see that the, their bat, they get the bat through the zone quicker. And, and even though they miss a couple balls, they're still hitting them further than they normally would. And some of them were going out of the park. Some of them were hitting the fence when normally they were falling about 15 feet short. So, so just that minor adjustment on some of the swings with these guys add 15 feet to the ball that's a difference in an out and a home run or you know it just it gets more zip on the ball getting through the infield too and, and I've, I've given them a couple drills to go home and practice to where that'll teach them to get their hands through the ball and get their hips into it and and hopefully that'll that'll uh, help their game a little bit and that's what they're here for is to improve their game and hopefully we we can you know we can help them with that and I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be one that gets to be so-called instructor here when i need to be having somebody watch me half the time and instruct my swing so it's uh it's it's a fun time to be out here and, and, and work with guys that, that look up to you. We were we were hitting some you know balls a pretty long way, but some of them we were missing and still going out of the park. And and some of the flaws and some of the things that, that I still do wrong in my swing that I know I do and, and sometimes just it's just a lack of mental focus or what that, that you know you uh, you still get into those bad habits. One first of all, pitch selection is everything. So I mean a lot of times you get into swinging at bad pitches, that's the first flaw that anybody has really. But as far as my swing goes. When, I, when I'm in the box, a lot of times when, I want, when I'm thinking about hitting the ball a long way, I tend to load up. And what that means is I'll, I'll, I'll drop the hands and load up, and by the time the ball gets to me, I'm not getting to it fast enough. Um, I, I, you know, I, I really try to stress the, the hip turn. I really try to stress getting the hands through the ball, almost like the nail sticking out of the bottom of your bat and you popping the balloon. And the ball's the balloon, and you're popping it as you come through. But sometimes, you, uh, like, I, like I said, when I, over, when I overload, when I have to try to catch up, my hips still turn, but the bat drags behind me. But sometimes I still get enough of the ball where it'll go out, especially on a smaller field like this. But but those are things where, uh, you know, if, if you're really doing it right, you don't load up, you get your hands through, your hips turn, everything comes in one motion, and you hit the ball out front, and that's when you get those real long home runs that everybody oohs and ahs about. But some drills that I've showed some guys out here to do, uh, one about trying to get your hands through, you know, you go up to a fence, put your bat on your belly, it's old baseball trick. And uh, you, get, you get against the fence, and then you work on swinging and getting the hands through without hitting the fence. And that teaches you to get the hands through first, teaches you to pop the balloon, or so to speak, an ice pick in your hand and stabbing something. And then uh, the other one, to get hip turn, I like to put the bat behind my back and pretend I'm going to hit a ball with it like this. That way, when you hit it, your hips are used, you're using your hips to hit the ball. That's the way, you know, this teaches you hip drive teaches you to turn your hips and, and really get your hips into the ball. That's where all your power comes from. Your legs and your hips are where most of the power comes from in, in any power hitter you see. You have the biggest arms in the world, but if you didn't get any hip drive and any turn on your swing, you can stand there all day and swing with the biggest arms in the world, but you're not going to hit anything anywhere. You know, I do them separately, of course. You can't do them all at one time, but in your swing, they, that all comes together in one motion. I mean, it's, it's not like your hands come through and then your hips come through because, you know, you're doing two separate drills. Everything has to be fluid and in one motion. So when I load and my, la my weight's still back here, when I come through, the hands go and the hips go at the same time. So everything goes in one motion and comes through the ball. And you finish out here. That way, you know, if your belly button's taking a picture of the pitcher, that means you've got your right hip turn. That's another baseball term they used to say, take a picture of the pitcher with your belly button. So when you turn, your, pick, you, your, face, your, your belly should be facing the pitcher. And I got a big belly, so it's facing the pitcher. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> But uh, that's, that's what I'm trying to stress is that it's all one motion. The, the, the hips and the hands all have to go at one time. If your hips go early and your hands don't, your back drags, you hit the ball behind you. If your hands go first and your hips don't come, 
you all you're doing is slapping it with your arms. So it's all got to be one fluid motion and just right through the ball, just like that. Like you said, I, I, I swing upward a little bit. Well, when I, when I get my stance, I do, my front shoulder is up in the air a little more. I mean, it's just because, you know, I guess from over the years, you know, the ball is coming at that angle. So I want to be in that same angle as the ball is coming in. So I'm, I'm on almost like a level plane with the ball because it comes in at this angle. If my shoulders are at that angle, we're, we're, I'm pretty level with the ball. So when I go back through that same zone where my shoulder is, it looks like I'm swinging up, but I'm actually catching the ball and meeting it level right out front here. So what happens is when I go, I come through here, I get to this point, and when I come through, I just come on around. Like, like uh, some people, like you were just saying, kind of snap it over to keep the ball, to keep on top of the ball where it's, it's not, I mean, it's, you're going right back through where the ball came, so you're in essence having a level swing on it. So you can bring your hands all the way through. I just let mine go. I, I still got the old baseball grip, so mine, mine just comes through here and then follows it on out. Talking about the, uh, the, the nail at the end of the bat, popping the balloon, so to speak. Uh, I see a lot of guys uh, when they come through, you know, they're working on getting the bat through, but then all of a sudden they just kind of they, they kind of drag just drag their shoulder through instead of letting the bat whip through. A lot of them, some of them even hold the bat all the way around. They don't even let the bat go. What what I suggest, and a lot of the guys, you, you'll hear a lot of the other hitters say the same thing. When you get to this point and you're stabbing the balloon and then coming on through, you you roll that wrist on through to let the bat whip, and that'll just give you that added distance and power on the ball. When you, when you come through and, 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 and kind of stay stiff, it locks your whole swing down. From this point, you're, you're done. Your swing's over. If you, if you come through, roll the wrist, and let it go, you, you're finishing your swing even more, and it just gives you added distance on the ball. It, it comes off the bat a lot harder. Oh, dang it. Oh, dang it. Oh, dang it. I hate those. Well, when, when you train for softball, I mean, uh, you know, everybody's got a different workout. Uh, for me, of course, I've had uh, – I've had shoulder surgeries on both. I've had two on the right, two on the left, and I'm, I'm, I'm needing another one on my right right now. But uh, the left ones, I, I kept tearing my rotator from diving for balls in the outfield. That's what that's what caused it. The more I dove and, and landed on it, it just kept tearing and tearing. So I had to have it repaired twice. The right one from throwing, I, I completely tore it uh, a couple years back, had reconstructive surgery on it, and it's kind of acting up again now. So I don't know if I'm going to try to get through this season without having surgery first and do it at the end of the season. Um, but as far as workouts and training, off season, I'll try to go to the gym four days a week. During the season, two to three maybe, three at the most. Uh, I'll go in on Tuesday and do legs. This is in season, of course. Uh, legs on Tuesday, that way they're fresh by the time the weekend comes around to play. Then I'll do everything else on Wednesday and Thursday. And then Friday's a kind of a travel day and a rest day. So when we get there on Saturday, I'm, I'm fresh. But uh, I do a lot of uh, a lot of reps and a medium weight. Um, I just because all I want to do is just just keep my strength there and just kind of stay lean and not not really get bulky. Because a few years I tried to get do really heavy lifting and got got bulked up and then my swing got slower. I, I felt like I was all bound up and couldn't get the bat through the zone. So uh, doing a lot of reps and lower weight helps me stay flexible. So uh, I think that's helped me a lot in my hitting because you know I'm flexible to go and and and, and hit whatever pitch comes in there and I can really I can really turn on them before when you're all bulky it's hard to do that me and Rusty started doing a thing uh, uh, a year ago where you do 21 just like if you're gonna do chest one day you do 21 reps you do five different lifts and just do one set of 21s and uh, the last uh, the last six or seven uh, reps of that one set should be kind of difficult the first the first 15 are for really for speed and agility you know muscle uh, stamina and then the last six are really when you get your strength. If you're having a struggle to get those last six up, that's where you, you, you keep your strength and uh, as well as leaning out. So that's, that's been the best workout I've ever have ever done, and I continue to do it now. And that's any body part you work on, uh, you do those 21s, and it, you'll, you'll see some good results out of it. How many one of us in, in, our, in our careers have had bad weekends? I mean, I think I hit, honestly had a weekend, I think, in Minnesota one time where I hit like three-something, right at 400. I mean, I, I used to hit that in baseball. So, you know, when, when a guy playing softball hits something that low, the first thing he'll do is just run and hide. But uh, when I went back that week and started working on, you know, going back to BP and hitting a bunch of balls, you know, I had Jeff and Rusty there, and they were uh, – they saw the little thing I was doing in my swing that I was loading too much. I mean, I was really getting in – I was up there moving my bat a lot. I was, you know, I was dropping the hands a whole lot more over-exaggerated than normal. And it was just – it was just slowing me down. I wasn't catching up with anything. So, uh just them pointing that out, you know, that you, you work on those things after somebody sees it and tells you what you're doing, just like we're doing out here, 
we all need somebody to, to tell us what we're doing wrong and, and you know because you can't see it yourself you got somebody else watching you so I just worked on it and you know and, and, and concentrated on not doing the things that I was doing wrong and, and it just got me back on it the next week got your confidence back up I mean heck you know we all get even the first at bat of every tournament I get nervous and every time I've stepped up to the plate at the long haul bombers my knees are shaking so it's a uh, it, it's a game but none of us are perfect and, and, and we all get nervous and, and, that, and even you know nervous causes some bad some you know bad habits as well but it's uh they all can be overcome if you just work on what you're doing wrong and just keep you know keep at it it'll 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 get better and with these wreck guys out here like you say wreck guys I hate saying that it just don't even sound right but but uh it, once we point out one or two things they're doing wrong every one of them is going to become better hitters and and, and like I've told a lot of these guys here, you know, they say something, about, I wish I could play on a major level. Well, half of these guys probably can one day. It's just there's not a lot of teams out there. There's a lot of players out there that can play this game on our level. It's just we're fortunate enough to be on those teams. And then when some of us old guys like me retire, that'll open up spots for these guys here to, to play.